So in module five, immunology, we will be giving you the overview of the subject. Immunology just uh, being the acquaintance of the society, today's world, how one virus has changed the whole life of yourself. It is a total mess in the educational system that you people are sitting in front of a, a laptop and you are just taking a virtual overview. You can't access a, a laboratory, you can't access the classrooms and all these things. Then who is the responsible person? The person, it is not a person. It is a small and smallest component, smallest organisms in the uh, environment that is one virus. The immunological uh, overview of the body, it consists with the resistance power. Your body has some resistance power against any foreign pathogen and the whole subject deals with the know-how, how your body reacts against any pathogen. We are telling it a pathogen, but not only pathogen, but also any harmful chemical also can create a same mess. In case of snake bite, it is not a pathogenic attack, a chemical, the snake venom is a defined chemical and it has some neurotoxic effect. It, it can dissolve the um, cytoplasmic membrane. It can um, cleave the genetic material of the DNA that is DNA replication can be stopped. There are several mode of actions of different type of venom of different type of snakes. So it is not on all the time a pathogen, but also any chemical which is harmful and the brain regards it as, as a non self, not a self product. Whenever some non self product is interacting with all the cell system of your body system, these non-cell product creates a uh, inflammatory response, immunological response against this one. All the body cells, some protein, pro-protein cascades, their name is complement system, different type of chemicals like they are called the cytokine, chemokine, chemoattractants, all take part in this immune triggering. And after their taking part, how a foreign invasion in the form, maybe in the form of pathogen or chemical, how it is resolved. It is the whole subject dealing with. Now, the immunity and health, it comprises component of host and the foreign macromolecule. They are called as antigen. The foreign macromolecule is antigen. They may be bacteria, virus, protein, worm, means parasites, or other component like a protein molecule, a peptide molecule, anything which are not a self product of the body. And whenever it is interacting with the body system, then the body will give rise any response against this one. Then why this response is needed? The brain gives the signal that it is a high time that all the cells will react and whenever you will react then only it will be resolved it is as simple as this now what is the function the function is the mechanisms used by the body of as protection against environmental agents that are foreign to the body so the protective behavior of the body system basically a constant state of war exists between would be pathogens and the host means the pathogen or would be pathogen and the host in between them all the time a war is prevailing 
and the immune system is responsible for defending the body against the threat of pathogenic attack. So the defense, the main word is the defense. So these defense gives the body the protection against any foreign invasion. Now, if you just think about any uh, bacterial, viral, uh, parasitic, fungus, any type of attack, which body don't recognize, don't know at all. There is no pre-existing uh, drug, no pre-existing exposure, nothing is there. Then what will be done? At first, the, all the cell will be interacting. They are then uh, being educated. Whenever you, for the first time, you go through the slides, then you refer to the book and you just try to assimilate the subject. After assimilation, when you have grabbed the overview of the subject, then what is being happened inside your brain? Some uh, knowledge is being used in that very moment. Means you in that very moment, suppose you are discussing with your friends regarding the subject, Suppose you are um, sitting in the exam uh, in the afternoon. Sometimes you just read just before the exam. So it is the effector function. As soon as you interact with the uh, subject matter, you try to grab it, you understand. Sometimes you uh, memorize and then you apply within a few hours or um, very few days. But sometimes what happens, you have given the uh, term one assessment and you have to write for the last same also, the same matter. Then what the brain will be, how the brain will be acting? The reading, the matters, they have been memorized. Whatever you have read, you have memorized this one. And for the second time before exam, if you want to uh, reproduce that matter in the examination hall, you will revise that matter. And this revision will just um, make the brain cells to just recapitulate the previous understanding and you can apply next day. In case of the pathogen and the cell interaction, the behavior is uh, like mm, doing in the same way. How? The cells for the first time when they interact with some pathogen, they understand their behavior, the molecular organization of the pathogen. And whenever the understanding is done, one population of the cell, they enact immediately or within mm, some hours and it is called the effector cells. And some populations of the cell, they understand the molecular organization, genetic organizations of the pathogen or the chemicals, mm, harmful chemicals, and they memorize the characteristic. And whenever for the second, for the third, for the fourth time, they will be interacting with the same chemical or the pathogen, all the cells as they are pre-educated, they will readily recognize that um, uh, uh, pathogen or chemical and no preparatory time is needed from the scratch. Understood? So, memorization is more uh, first uh, actively uh, giving resistance against the pathogen and the vaccination the whole conceptions of the vaccination is depending upon this memorization methodology. That is, for the first time, when you take the vaccine, what is the candidate of the vaccine? The same molecular organization of the pathogen against which you want to give resistance. That may be a genetic component, a DNA, RNA vaccine maybe, or a biomarker or a biomolecule, which is the signature molecule of that pathogen, which are identified and it can be challenged directly to the um, host or the human subjects. Then what is being done? 
when these molecules or genetic material like dna rna they just go inside your body as injection or oral vaccine there are several type of route of administration polio vaccine orally it has been given uh, bcg um, tuberculosis vaccine they are given just beneath the epithelial membrane or skin so whenever the um, Uh, bacillus vaccine is given you develop a red sort of uh, scar and some granuloma uh, it is formed and sometimes the vaccination it is given intravenous and maximum time the vaccination is given intramuscular in the direct in the muscles muscle is punctured through needle and it is given so there are several route of administration optimization is done ethically officially it has to be done when there are such challenge where human uh, being don't have the time to pass the research because all the research for vaccine development for drug development they need some uh, years not some hours or days or months they need several years to carry out the research in the cell system then the lower animal system then the higher animal system called the vertebrates then the primates primates means monkey baboon chimpanzees then the human being that is called the clinical trial but what you are viewing nowadays directly covid vaccine is applied to the human beings because mankind is facing so much of death threat uh, this cannot be afforded the time passing the time in researching them in applying them into lower animals lower model system there is no such time that is why directly um, human beings is being beings are compelled to have this sort of vaccine challenge now whenever the vaccine in the first day first dose it is given the um, pathogenic component is interacting with all the cell system of your body and the cells in steps the cell signalings are on different uh, systems called the innate immune system means instant immunological response and adaptive immune response that is it takes some time for adaptation for the cells to recognize the foreign component all the immune system takes part and the body cells they are edu- being educated they are reading because it is the reading phase the optimization phase is the reading phase what reading the matter is the chemical organization the molecular organizations of the invading pathogens now whenever the cells are um, getting educated properly one populations of the cell will be acting at that very time giving some reaction whenever you uh, encounter with some allergen you develop the allergy allergy is the reaction by which the whole system reacts your your teary eyes uh, flowing noses sometimes rashes over skin all are the reactive behavior of the body by which you can understand that some worry is being initiated inside your body system at the end of the word the cell will override the pathogen and it will be cleared now what is happening after the interaction whenever the cells are uh, efficiently clearing the pathogen at for that very time of infection some populations of the cells are stored for future use with the memory of the pathogenic molecular organization and when you take the booster dose what happens the same pathogen or its component is interacting with the cell and memory cells and the, as the memory cells have the pre education they will recognize these pathogens very readily 
and the time which has passed in the primary immune response in the first case for the second case case uh, during the booster dose or in the natural infection when you face the uh, pathogen for the second time for the third time or in case of vaccination where you give the booster dose first booster dose second booster dose this is the phenomenon same we happens inside the body system where the cells the pre educated cells are recognize the pathogen very readily no such time is passed or needed to be passed to just being educated from the scratch and the uh, chem chemicals which are secreted uh, against that pathogen to lyse the pathogen or the cells which can directly engulf the pathogen there are two types of immunity uh, systems immunity response immunological response one is cell mediated response where cells directly take charge and engulf the pathogen and some cases where some chemicals called antibodies are produce to resolve the pathogen now all the immunological response are triggered and very readily within one two days the chemicals are secreted to resolve the pathogen these chemicals are antibodies and the secretions of the antibody the productions of the antibody is also in a higher concentration in comparison with the primary antibody so sometimes if you follow properly in booster doses the reaction for covid viruses it is found more why the readily recognizable cells they recognize the same pathogen and they react against that pathogen so fastly that the reactive uh, inflammatory behavior within this one that is the war between the um uh, cells and the pathogenic component the cells tries to over override the pathogenic component and whenever it is done successfully these uh, immunological response give a successful resistance to the pathogen now you can ask that if we want to resist the pathogen then how much it is safe to introduce the pathogen or its component to the host system there is no other way because to uh, memorize the matter you have to interact with the matter and the key step is to identify the biomolecule so specifically that it should be carrying the whole characteristic feature of the pathogen but it should not create any harmful side effect so it is a key factor the balance between risk and benefit to maintain this one it is very hard to do that is why millions and trillions of uh, dollars have been um, invested in developing a vaccine candidate but no successful candidature has been identified till yet whatever we are receiving we are telling them it is a very specific one but uh, the days will be giving you the uh, hint how much they are specific now we will be sharing you with a video that will give you a overview of the immunological system how immune system works is it visible yes ma'am yes ma'am acha so you just see whether it has been uh, the sound is being played or not you just see <coughs> sound Next, is coming oh, sound no, is ma'am the no. sound is not coming audio is okay. not coming okay yeah let me check 
The human immune system is the most complex biological system we know after the human brain, and yet most of us never learn how it works or what it is. Your immune system consists of hundreds of tiny... The human immune system is the most complex biological system we know after the human brain, and yet most of us never learn how it works or what it is. Your immune system consists of hundreds of tiny and two large organs. It has its own transport network spread throughout your body. Every day, it makes hundreds of billions of fresh cells organized like an army with soldiers, captains, intelligence officers, heavy weapons, and crazy suicide bombers. It's not some sort of abstract entity. Your immune system is you. Your biology protecting you from the billions of microorganisms that want to consume you and from your own perverted cells that turn into cancer. It's so manifold that it's impossible to cover in one video, so we'll make a series looking at different aspects of it. Today, what happens when your body is invaded and your first lines of defenses are engaged in a fight for life and death? It's been a normal day when suddenly the world explodes and an asteroid rips the sky open. Countless alien life forms invade, ready to destroy cities and infrastructure and eat civilians. Or this is what your cells experience. You look at your bleeding thumb that you just cut on a dirty twig in the park. How annoying. But inside the wound, a horrible catastrophe has happened. There are dead cells and blood and dirt everywhere. Even worse, countless bacteria invade the warm caverns between your helpless cells to explore their new home, steal your resources, and poop everywhere. Immediately, the first stage of your defense kicks in. The cells that survived the impact or are hurt or dying scream in panic, releasing an onslaught of chemical alarm signals that awaken your immune system. The first cells to show up are macrophages. If an average cell were the size of a human, a macrophage would be the size of a black rhino, a stoic cell in principle, but you wouldn't want to annoy it. Bacteria do annoy them. Within seconds, the large cells attack and begin killing them without mercy. They stretch out parts like the arms of an octopus and grab the bacteria to swallow them whole and digest them alive. A macrophage can eat 100 bacteria before it's exhausted. But there are too many enemies, so the macrophages call for reinforcements. In your blood, hundreds of thousands of neutrophils pick up their signals and move to the battlefield. Neutrophils are intense suicide warriors that only live to kill. They're so enthusiastic about killing that they kill themselves a few days after birth so they don't have time to accidentally destroy your body from the inside. As soon as neutrophils arrive, they begin vomiting deadly chemicals at bacteria or devour them. They are so careless in their attacks that they are causing real damage to your own cells, but collateral damage is not their concern now. Or ever. Some neutrophils go so far to push their suicide button and explode, casting wide and toxic nets made from their own DNA filled with deadly chemicals that trap and kill bacteria. Sometimes they can continue fighting after that, even though they're sort of dead already. This is how much fun they have killing. While the battle rages, your blood vessels let fluid stream into the battlefield like a dam opening up towards a valley. You notice this as inflammation. Your thumb swells up a little and gets red and warm. The fluid brings a silent killer into the battle zone, millions of complement proteins a sort of automated liquid weapon that stuns and kills bacteria by ripping holes into them. We made a whole video explaining them in detail. We're reaching a crossroad now. If things go well, your first line of defense kills the invaders quickly. But sometimes, the enemies are too strong and would overwhelm your defenses eventually, which means certain death for you, the human. This is the hour of the dendritic cell, your immune system's intelligence officer. While your soldiers were bashing in heads, it was collecting samples by ripping bacteria into tiny parts and covering itself in it. 
like a soldier decorating itself in the guts of a dead enemy. The cell leaves the battlefield and enters the superhighway of your immune system that connects all your tissues with your immune headquarters, your lymph nodes. The dendritic cell coming from the battlefield is looking for a helper T cell, which is a sort of all-purpose commander cell within your immune army. But not any helper T cell, one that happens to have just the right weapon for the bacteria that infected your wound. So it goes around and rubs itself, still covered in bacteria parts, against every helper T cell it meets. Most T cells are a bit disgusted and not interested. But after a few hours, something clicks. A helper T cell recognizes the bacteria parts. This cell is the weapon that's needed right now. The dendritic cell is overjoyed and activates the helper T cell. Okay, wait. How come your immune system has a cell that has a weapon against the specific bacteria that infected you? Well, your immune system has a perfect weapon against every possible disease in the universe, against the Black Death, the coronavirus, or an infection that will emerge in 100 years on Mars. We'll talk about this a bit more in the next video because it's very complex. So for now, just know that you have billions of unique helper T cells that each have weapons against every possible enemy. After the right T cell is activated, your second line of defense awakes and rises like a teenager that needs to get up on a school day, very slowly. Your heavy weapons are incredibly effective, but they're not fast. The activated helper T cell begins to clone itself over and over again. One becomes two, two become four, until there are thousands of them. Now they split into two groups. The first group quickly moves to help out your soldiers. At the battlefield, things are getting out of hand. A tired macrophage is ready to give up. After fighting for days, it just wants to go to sleep, like many of its buddies have done already. But now the helper T cells arrive. One of them comes to the tired macrophage and whispers something using special chemical signals. In a heartbeat, the demoralized soldier feels fresh again. But there's something else, a hot, white anger. The macrophage knows what it needs to do. Kill. Invigorated, it throws itself against the enemies once again. All over the battlefield, this begins to happen. Meanwhile, the second group of helper T cells was working on activating another line of defense, B cells, your antibody factories. Antibodies are protein superweapons that look like tiny crabs with two pincers to grab enemies. Just like the helper T cells, there are B cells in your body that are able to make just the right antibodies for every possible enemy. And the helper T cell is looking for exactly these B cells. After a day or two, the right B cell is found and begins to clone itself. As soon as enough clones have been made, each B cell begins pumping out up to 2,000 antibodies per second. About a week after you injured yourself and bacteria invaded, your second line of defense finally arrives in full force. The tiny army begins to saturate the battlefield, pinching and stunning desperate bacteria. The antibodies clump them together and make them unable to move or fight, while your soldiers massacre the defenseless victims. The tide is turning fast. As the last enemies are cleaned up, your soldiers realize they are no longer needed and begin to kill themselves to save resources. But not all of them. A few helper T cells remain and turn into memory cells. They will guard the tissue for years, making sure the same bacteria will never again gain a foothold here. Similarly, a few B cells will stay alive and keep producing a low amount of antibodies, making you immune against this bacteria, maybe for the rest of your life. One day you wake up and notice that the wound has grown over and left nothing but a faint red mark. You were completely unaware of the drama your cells had to deal with. Ma'am, audio is not coming. Ma'am, you are muted. Ma'am, you are muted.
Can't you hear the video? Ma'am, uh, at the last, uh, it was not audible, ma'am. But it's okay, I think. When you are muted, we couldn't hear. Yeah, uh, repeat, please. When you are muted, we couldn't hear the audio. When you are not muted, we could, we could hear it. Mama, at last you muted. How 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 long you couldn't hear? One minute. One, One minute. minute. One minute. No, ma'am. Last last fifteen to fifteen to thirteen second. Thirteen to fifteen second minute. Okay. Last. Okay. I I thought that everything is missed. Okay. Let me replay that one. Only that's one two minutes, na? Okay. Ma'am, you are not. I think uh, the screen is not shared, ma'am. Huh? Huh? The screen is not shared. I think. Screen is not shared. Yes, ma'am. Now the screen is shared. Okay. Um, sound is not coming. Ma audio is not uh, audible. Audio is not audible. No, ma'am. And I'm one, thing, yeah, yeah, I'm reloading that one. Uh, one thing you just remember, whenever it is being recorded, na, the um, by default it is not uh, catching up the audio system. Whatever uh, setting I change, so I have given that link in a PPT in, in within the uh, full PPT system. Maybe it is, a, it is a third slide. You please click that link, and it will be working. Going passion project for almost a decade because the immune system is just about the most amazing okay. and fascinating topic there is. So go on a journey. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma From mystery organs, murder universities to the largest library in the universe. Explore how incredibly vast your immune system is and how it actually works, how it fights enemies from cancer to HIV or just the flu. Learn how you can boost it and if that's actually a good idea. The book will be out in six weeks, and it would mean the world to us and Philip if you could pre-order it. Pre-ordering is super important in the world of books, and in contrast... We have some more time. Medical school is hard. Osmosis makes it easy just... Can you hear the next video? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Stay on track with exclusive videos, practice questions, flashcards, and personalized study tools. Imagine I could mean a lot of things. A lineup, viruses, bacteria, fungi, protists, parasitic worms. We could go on. Your body has external protection against these things, like your skin. We call that a first line of defense because it's the first line against letting these pathogens inside your body. Mucous membranes too, like the lining of your nose, will keep pathogens from getting inside. This first line of defense is non-specific because it's not selective about what it blocks from getting into your body. But this is all not foolproof and sometimes they do get in. And when they do, your immune system has all kinds of ways to deal. After all, this is not its first rodeo. So let's say they break through our first line of defense. Well, the second line of defense includes the inflammatory response. To explain it very simply, let's say you step on a sharp stick and there's some bacteria on that stick in your foot. The initial damage of this stick into your foot can cause certain types of cells, such as a mast cell, to react. These cells are filled with substances that work with allergic responses and inflammatory responses too. One substance that they contain is histamine. If they are triggered to release histamine, the result is that this will cause blood vessels to dilate, meaning they widen near the injury. Histamine also contributes to making these blood vessels leakier. So
The dilation and the leakiness of the blood vessel makes it easier for many types of white blood cells, such as certain types of macrophages, to reach the area. And macrophages do what macrophages do best. They consume the pathogens. Additionally, your body has a complement system. The complement system is not what it sounds like. It basically works to help or complement the actions of the immune system. It can work with nonspecific or specific responses. In this situation, the release of complement factors, in this case, can further attract macrophages to the area to consume pathogens. When all the signaling stops, the damaged area can return to normal. The pathogen has been terminated. However, that also was a nonspecific response. Who knows what was on that stick? So that takes us to the third line of defense, the specific line of defense. If you had a cold virus spreading through your body, you may need your response to be targeted on that pathogen. Now, as we give our typical notice, the immune system is very complex. We've just been giving some basics and we're going to continue to do so, but there are a lot of extra details and exceptions that this short video can't go into. We encourage you to explore. Okay, so we mentioned, what if we need a more targeted response? We're moving into something known as adaptive immunity. Sounds fancy, this is a specific response to an antigen. An antigen is something the body recognizes as non-self, and in this case, it is something that would be a part of the pathogen. This adaptive response is going to be the third line of defense, as the first and second line of defense may not have been enough to control the pathogen. We're going to focus on the basics of two adaptive responses, cell-mediated and humoral. Cell-mediated. This involves the cytotoxic T cell. The cytotoxic T cell is a white blood cell that has the ability to destroy cells that have been infected by the pathogen. It does this by releasing signals that causes the infected cell to do apoptosis, which is a type of self-destruct. It can do this by releasing a protein called perforin, which actually causes holes in the cell membrane. This causes water and ions to flow into it and destroys the cell. When cells that have been infected by a pathogen are destroyed, this can also destroy the pathogen, or it can mean the pathogen at least can no longer replicate inside that infected cell. The thing is, for this response to work, you have to activate a cytotoxic T cell. Stimulating a cytotoxic T cell could mean an infected cell presents an antigen from the pathogen that had infected it. The infected cell presents the antigen on its own cell membrane, kind of like a little flag saying, Hey, I've been infected, and here you go, this is what it is. This activates cytotoxic T cells to bind and release signals that causes the infected cell to perform apoptosis. But there's another way to stimulate cytotoxic T cells too. Remember how macrophages may have been consuming the pathogen? When they do, they process the pathogen, and the antigens from the pathogen are transferred to the macrophage's surface. A white blood cell called the T helper cell can bind, the macrophage will release chemical signals, which then causes the T helper cell to release chemical signals, which then can stimulate cytotoxic T cells. Cytotoxic T cells will be in search of infected cells so they can stop the pathogen, and they will also continue to amplify the immune response. That's the cell mediated response, simplified. But remember how we mentioned those helper T cells? They're big helpers as they help not only in the cell mediated response, but they also help in the humoral response. So what happens in the humoral response? In one scenario, a macrophage has consumed a pathogen and once again has an antigen from the pathogen on its cell membrane surface. Then it binds a helper T cell. That helper T cell could also stimulate a white blood cell known as a B cell. B cells are white blood cells that have the ability to make something called antibodies. Before I define antibody, can we just take a moment and recognize that there are three words that sound very similar and can involve the immune system. Antigen, which is something that the immune system recognizes as foreign to the body. We've been mentioning that one a lot. Antibiotics are substances that can specifically destroy bacteria. We have a separate video on those. But antibodies are something totally different. Antibodies are proteins, and they tend to be in a Y shape. Antibodies have an antigen binding area where they bind a specific antigen. They will be found in blood, but many antibodies can also be found in mucus, saliva, breast milk, and more. There are different classes of antibodies. For example, IgE can protect against parasitic worms, and it's responsible for a lot of allergic reactions. 
Antibodies are generally very specific, so there must be an antibody that is able to bind to an antigen. When antibodies bind an antigen, they can deactivate the pathogen by affecting the ability of the pathogen to move, reproduce, or cause harm. The binding can also be like signs telling macrophages, here it is, come eat it. So activating B cells causes these antibodies to be produced. And this is part of the humoral response. While B cells can be activated by a T helper cell, they can also be activated by free antigens themselves that they may come in contact with. Now we do wanna mention that both in the humoral and cell mediated response, there are memory cells. There are memory B cells and memory T cells. These cells keep a memory of the antigen they were exposed to. Memory B cells can activate plasma B cells, which will make antibodies. Memory T cells can activate cytotoxic T cells, which will go after infected cells. The ability to keep a memory is very important, and this is also where vaccines come in. Vaccines can introduce either an inactivated or very weakened pathogen. This means the body does not get the disease itself, but it will launch an immune response. By launching an immune response, there will ultimately be memory immune cells that will be involved in launching an efficient attack if that pathogen is ever encountered in the future. Overall, this immune system that you have, it's pretty incredible. There are entire giant textbooks about this topic alone and careers dedicated to studying it. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. So for today, we are stopping here about the overview of the immune system, the cells, how the invading pathogens or harmful chemicals interact with the cell system and the body give the resistance.